Think you're too cool for school? Well, it's time to prove it in battle. You're looking a little green, though. Let's start with the basics. Hello, everybody. My name is to you, and welcome to the Splatoon 2 Global Test Fire. This was a demo that Nintendo released pretty recently uh, to serve as a way to test out the game's online functionality. Splatoon 2. This is the sequel to the original Splatoon game for the Nintendo Switch. We don't have a release date quite yet at the time this video is being recorded, but this is a game that I am greatly looking forward to because, um, as you guys probably know, Splatoon is my favorite game on the Wii U, so I'm really happy that we're going to get a sequel to it for the Nintendo Switch within the first year of the system being a thing. So the gameplay for Splatoon 2 is basically the same as the original. You're going to be covering up the ground in your in your team's uh, colored ink, and whoever has the most ink spotted on the ground will be the winner of the of Turf Wars. Now there are a couple changes here and there, which we'll be getting into a little bit later in the video. Um, but all in all, it is basically the same thing as the original game, but um, they did make a couple changes, and I think these changes um, are going to be... Re uh, I'm really looking forward to playing more around um, with this Splatoon 2 when the final game is released. But without further ado, let's go into our first online battle. Therefore, ink the most tough to win. Alright, so those of you who have absolutely no idea how Splatoon works, um, this is Nintendo's uh, uh, answer to the super genre. Except, rather than getting points from attacking your opponent, you get points from covering the ground in your own colored of ink, in your own color of ink. Whoever has the most uh, turf covered at the end of every match will be the winner. Now, as you start right there, um, your ink will run out eventually, but if you swim in your own ink, you, um, your ink tank will be refilled. The really nice thing about this game is that they changed the ink tank, uh, kind of. Um, what I mean by that is that there's now a, an additional bar on the, ink, on the ink tank that will tell you how much ink you need to use your sub-weapon. This is going to be very useful um, in, in the final game because um, um, sub weapons are very important for the many different strategies that people will be using when they play online. So I'm very happy that there. I, I do believe that there was something like this in the original game. I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head, but uh, I'm very happy that if they did make the villas in the original game, then at least they made it more noticeable in this game. So, a few other things that are pretty different about uh, this game compared to the original one. Um, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, um, there's an icon saying this way. In the original Splatoon game, at least in the American version, uh, you press up on the D-pad to uh, say, come on. Unfortunately, people eventually took this the wrong way, because uh, it, people would use this sort of as a rage button, um, where if they died at, at one point, then people would spam the come on button and the message would just get lost. I'm really happy that they changed it um, to say this way now, so that the message will be more clear that if you press this button, it means that you want your teammates to come over to you. So I'm really happy that they made that change, and it's one of the many things that the Splatoon do is going to be doing that I'm really looking forward to. And that right there, you saw a special weapon. None of the special weapons from the original game are going to be returning in Splatoon 2. All of them are going to be brand new. The Tenta Missile is this game's answer to the um, to the Ink Strike. How the Ink Strike worked in the original game was that you play is that you played Splatoon with the gamepad and you tap the gamepad uh, to fire an Ink Missile at a certain part of the map. There is no gamepad in on the Nintendo Switch, just so they obviously had to change this around. How it works this time is that you're going to aim the Tenta Missile and it'll tell you where all the opponents are going to be located at and you can only fire it if you lock onto an opponent. The missiles themselves are a bit easy to avoid once you get the hang of how they work, but what is by far the most useful part of the Tenta Missile is, uh, is the ability to spot your opponents um, even if they're across the map, so I think this is by far the greatest part of this weapon, um, and, and uh, I, think it's, I personally think that it's going to be like the unsung hero of the Tenta Missile. And baby Jude is so adorable! Not only do they have a kitty, but now they have a baby kitty! And we were the most valuable team member! Yay!
Muscle Forge Fitness. Oh yeah. Alrighty then, now we're gonna be playing with the roller. The roller is a returning weapon from the original game. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. Um, all the weapons, aside from one, for the global test fire are all returning weapons are from the original game. Um, the, um, there is one brand new weapon, which we'll see a little bit later in the video, but as for right now, I'm going to be talking about the differences between the rollers from Splatoon 2 and the original game. Um, the biggest change with the roller this time around is when you jump, you're going to be doing a vertical slash with the roller rather than a horizontal one. Um, this is uh, kind of a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. The bad thing is you don't have as much of a range um, as you do for the original. But the nice thing, what makes me happy about it, is the fact that if you're going up against the roller, then you're going to have a bigger, um, then it's going to be a bit easier for you to get away from the roller. This is kind of something that I have a problem with in the original game, um, is that it seemed like I had a bit of a hard time getting away from a roller, um, but it looks like it's going to be easier this time around. That right there was the special weapon for the roller. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. The only one I can really remember is the, um, Tenta Missile. Um, but that special weapon, uh, you, uh, you jump up in the air and slam into the ground with a giant explosion of awesomeness. Um, I'm not that great at that special weapon. Um, I, was, I had a bit of a hard time getting used to that one compared to the other special weapons that we'll be seeing later in the video. Um, but I think it's pretty cool and I can certainly see all the a lot of the strategies they could be doing with uh, that weapon when the final game is released. Um, um, it's best to use if you're surrounded by other opponents, because if you're surrounded by other opponents, you can use a special weapon to jump up in the air and slam into the ground and destroy all of them at once. I believe there is, an, you'll even be able to see this a bit later in the video. Um, this is this video is being recorded in post commentary because I didn't really feel confident in my ability to do live commentary in a game that I've never played before. So yay! And also, one thing that's worth mentioning is the fact that. Um, uh, unlike the Global Test Fire for the original Splatoon game, this one took place over the course of a weekend, whereas the original one, even though there were two Global Test Fires, they both only lasted like a day. This one, however, took place over the course of a weekend. All the footage you're going to be seeing in this video was recorded on the same Splatoon uh, Global Test Fire day. Um, I played around with it on the other days, and I didn't record any footage for that, but I just wanted to, because I just wanted to play around with the game on my own time. Um, but all in all, I'm really loving Splatoon 2 so far, and I'm really looking forward to the final game. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hmm, I wonder who won that round. And now we're going towards the reef, and there's a birdie! Alright, so the reef and Muscle Forge Fitness were the only stages that were available during the Global Test Fire. Although I think Nintendo did announce a, another stage uh, between um, the Test Fire and, uh, and this video is being released. Um, but this right here, this is the Splat Charger. By far my least favorite weapon from the Global Test Fire. Um, be, be, not necessarily because it's a bad weapon, it's just that I am terrible at sniper weapons. No matter what game I'm playing, I will never be good with the sniper. <laughs> so, any sniper players out there are probably going to be watching this video. It's like, oh my god, you're such a nitty. You are the worst sniper in the history of anything ever. <laughs> That right there was the new special weapon for the Splat Charger. I don't really remember the name of the top of my head. Um, I'll have captions on screen when we um, get to the special weapons. Um, but uh, the new special weapon for the Ink Charger, this will allow you to like pull out like a fire hose of death and you will be able to attack your opponents like that. 
Um, I believe this will also cut through, go through walls and barriers and things like that. So, um, this is basically Splatoon 2's replacement for the Killer Whale from the original game. The, th the big difference is, is that the Killer Whale, it had a wider range of attack, but the thing was that you, it, you couldn't really move while you were uh, using it. You can move around just very slowly with the new, with the new special weapon. Um, and I, and personally, I think that the, this new special weapon is a bit harder to avoid than uh, the uh, Killer Whale was from the original game. Though that's just my personal opinion. Some of the people out there who play this game may have had a bit of an easier time avoiding it. And a sniper got destroyed by a sniper. How sad. All right, so that's basically everything that I want to talk about with the Splat Charger. Um, so let's take this time to discuss the reef itself. The reef is basically going to be like um, the most generic uh, stage in the game, at least from the stages that we've seen so far. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's always a good idea to make sure you have that one stage that let's see that teaches the new players uh, how the gameplay aspects of the game is going to work. Um, you can think of this as something along the lines of like the Final Destination equivalent from like Super Smash Brothers. Um, Personally, I like to think this is like the Walla Warehouse equivalent, except uh, this is an outdoor stage. The reason I say that is because like, I consider Walla Warehouse to be the most uh, basic stage in, Splatoon, in the original Splatoon game. Same can be said about the Reef. But there is something very interesting about the, this one um, compared to the other maps in the series. Um, there, you can see that there's obviously like a bridge in the map. So. This is a pretty interesting weapon because uh, I can imagine that something like an Ink Strike um, or a Tenta Missile or something like that hitting the top of the bridge wouldn't really necessarily affect the people at the bottom of the bridge, but the fact that there are like two layers of ground right there, um, I don't really remember any of the stages from the original game having that, so that's going to be pretty interesting to uh, deal with in uh, um, when we're playing through this game. Alright, so now we're going to be seeing on screen right now, and quick shout out to the Max for um, allowing me to use this footage. But there's something I'd like to demonstrate on screen real quick before we move on to our final match for the Global Test Fire. And that's this glitch that happens on Muscle Forge Fitness. For some reason, when you're playing with Splat Duelies, if you roll into this one specific wall, the Inkling will be sent sky high. Um, I noticed that the videos that I've seen for this glitch that you'll appear on the rafters or even outside the building. I think at one point you then went out into like space or something like that. I'm not entirely sure how that worked, but um, it was a it was a pretty interesting glitch, and I kind of hope Nintendo patches it out when the uh, final game is released. But um, because this is gonna be a very game breaking uh, glitch when the final game is released, so I don't see why Nintendo wouldn't patch it out before the game is released. And now for our final match in the Splatoon 2 Global Test Fire. We're going to be returning to Muscle Forge Fitness with the brand new weapons, the Splat Duelies. Oh yeah. How the Splat Duelies work is this is a two-gun weapon. You can think of it as something along the lines of like Tomb Raider or something like that for people out there who like Tomb Raider like me. <laughs> um, but um, what the unique thing about the Splat Duelies is that you're going to have a separate aiming verticals. Now they're both going to aim at the same spot, but they're going to be like slightly on uh, different locations. So it seems like you're going to have like a bit of a wider range of attack. Um, the individual bullets are seem like they do a bit less damage than a, than a splatter shot. Um, but the unique thing about this weapon, and the reason why I really like it, is the fact that if you press the jump button while you're using Splat Duty and while you're firing, you will dodge back and forth um, out of the way of areas. As I said right there, a really neat detail that I really like about Muscle Forge Fitness is the fact that underneath the stage is like a pool and tennis courts and things like that. It is a really awesome detail that you're not really going to be seeing a whole lot, a lot um, when you're playing through the game, but it's a really awesome detail. But going back to the Splat Duelies, um, well first of all right there you can see what it looks like uh, to be on the receiving end of a tent attack missile. As I said earlier, it's a little easy to avoid if you know what you're doing. Um, and as I saw right there, that Inkling was using the dodging maneuver for the Splat Duelies. When you use a dodge maneuver, um, both of the Inkling verticals will become one and your attacks will be much more powerful. 
And this right here, I believe it's called the Inkjet. How this works is when you activate it, you'll go flying into the air um, and you'll be able to attack enemies from above. You are not invincible during this. You will still get attacked um, while you're in the Inkjet. Um, but the cool thing about the Inkjet is when you're firing at your opponents, um, you, will, you will eventually super jump back over to your original location. Another thing worth mentioning about uh, the um, Splatoolies is uh, the fact that um, it has a brand new uh, sub weapon as well. It has the curling bombs. Um, I didn't really use this a whole lot during my playtime with this game, um, but this is just something that I wanted to bring up. And the last new gameplay mechanic that I wanted to talk about with uh, Splatoon 2 is how they changed the map in this game. The original game um, used the gamepad as a way to check the as well as a way to always display a map on screen. Um, but the Nintendo Switch is a single screen experience, so they had to change that obviously. How they changed it this time around is um, when you press the X button, you will pull up a map that will allow you to um, super jump uh, by pointing uh, your by pointing over another player. Something interesting that I noticed when I was playing through this game is the fact that if you don't have your Joy-Cons connected to the Joy-Con group, um, all of your aiming controls are going to be on the right Joy-Con, so um, I'm kind of hoping that people out there who are left-handed have the option to use the left Joy-Con for aiming when the final game is released. I'm not left-handed myself, but this is something that I hope that Nintendo does eventually. And we made a pretty awesome comeback towards the end of that match. Yay! Except we didn't. <laughs> Alright, so before we end the video, one last thing that I'd like to talk about is this game's handheld mode. In the original Splatoon game, there was a mode called uh, Battle Dojo. Um, and the thing about the Battle Dojo was the fact that um, the player who had the gamepad it seemed like they were at a bit of a disadvantage because of the fact that um, the it's just it was just awkward to control it with the, with the, um, when you're playing on the gamepad. That does not seem to be the case in handheld mode on Splatoon 2. So that's just something that I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, and as I saw right there, um, I don't know exactly what was going on when uh, this was happening, but uh, towards the end of the um, global test fire. Um, I was able to play a couple matches beyond the point that uh, we were supposed to. <laughs> so eventually Nintendo just like kicked everybody off the servers, so that was pretty that was a pretty funny thing that happened. And that's gonna be it for this video for the Splatoon 2 Global Test Fire. If you want more Splatoon coverage, I am currently doing a let's play of the original game on my YouTube channel, so if you'd like to check that out, there will be an end screen on screen that you can check out if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm really enjoying the original Splatoon game, so feel free to check it out if you want. And thank you guys so much for watching this video, and until next time, we need to gear to you. Oh yeah!